Hey guys, what's up? It's your girl, Mother of Karma, and I'm glad that you're back tuning in with me, and I'm thankful that you took the time to come check on me and see what I've been talking about. Um, this reading is actually going to be about chapter six, 1 Nephi, chapter 16, in the Book of Mormon, and it discusses the, the Liahona. Now, um, just a little overview, or recap of what's going on is... Um, Nephi, Nephi and his father and his mother and his brothers, there's three other brothers, um, picked up from Jerusalem and were guided to go into the wilderness um, because the Lord spoke unto Lehi, who is the father, and Nephi, who is the, um, I want to say he's the third son, so like the middle child. And um, the Lord has bestowed, you know, all of his power, not all of his power, but a lot of power unto Nephi, who is the middle son, um, in order to guide them through the wilderness and on their journey. And um, I'm at, chapter 16 is at the part where the the oldest two brothers, Lemon and Lemuel, they harden their hearts and they tend to like rebel verbally against the brother and everything that he like says. And it's just crazy because these people have literally seen angels and seen the Lord for themselves and they still disobey the brother and what the brother is telling them. So, um, you know, they wake up one night from having lost, well, Nephi went into to go search for food and he broke the arrow that he had because I guess he like withdrew it too, too much, like was too strong with the arrow and broke it. So he ended up making a new one and then, um, you know, they end up, he ended up missing the, the shot and missing the food. Um, for them to eat as they are journeying in the wilderness. They had to kill their own hunt for their own food. So the Liahona is a Consider like a ball That opens up and it's made of, it's like preciously made of gold metals and, and it kind of looks like a inside of it kind of looks like a compass But it's like ticking intertwining all these gadgets inside and there's like um apparently the words there's words that's written inside of it and the words change from time to time and what what is written inside of it changes from time to time now there is a video of it on the book of mormon channel and i would suggest you go watch it it literally has leahona in the title and it's chapter 16 now I was reading this and i watched the video and you know my mind just got to swirling and i'm just like okay hold on these people are way back in like, I forget the timeline, but hold on, I can check. The time was, to be exact, according to the book, 600 to 592 BC, okay, before Christ. And, you know, to, to tell me that at this time such great technology was just dropped outside their tent when they woke up you know the father woke up and walked outside the tent in order to journey further into the wilderness the, the next morning and during this journey is when they saw you know the father woke up and right at his feet was this ball of great magnificence great um intricate um creation of in infrastructure not infrastructure um, craftsmanship, blacksmithship, because it was made of metals. It was all made of all these metals, and nobody in the family had made it. And it just appeared, you know, right in front of his tent. Now, it was just the technology of it was just so advanced for the time setting that they were in, to where I started questioning, like, okay, is it safe to say that since you know, they have found something of such advanced technology that, you know, God or the Lord, God and the Lord, excuse me, because the Lord is often referred to as Jesus Christ and God is, you know, the father of Jesus Christ. So, to say that the Leonhona, uh, you know, it, it did, in which it did appear right in front of his feet that morning, did not come from an advanced level of civilization or technology okay um really just bestows my mind and it really just does not sit right with me but 
um, I mean, you know, I'm not going against the book or anything like that. I'm actually reading it and I'm finding a lot of things to be very interesting. Um, I continuously have lessons at church and, excuse me, when I ask my elders these questions, they're just like, oh, that's a great question. <laughs> we don't know. So I'm just like, how you don't know? But, you know, they just read the book and they practice and they preach by the book. So I'm like, okay. But at the same time, I'm, like, really, like, challenging myself, and I'm just like, okay, you can't just take it for what it is, because this ball of scripture and of direction and of knowledge was just so far beyond advanced from what these people already had and what they were creating and what they were truly capable of at that time. Now, I had just been guided to pull a couple cards on it because I truly I this reading has been like sitting on my mind for a, a while and I was just like I don't know this might hurt a couple people it might test people's faith and I don't want to be that person or that bitch or that guy whatever the fuck I don't give a shit but you know this is just how my mind works and I'm here to share it with you and um I just think it's greatness honestly I think like something being so advanced during that time just appearing like Okay, definitely is just magnificent. Okay, it was magnificent, magnificent levels of work and just advanced. Just it was just so advanced to where I was like, okay, I gotta speak on it because we gotta figure out how this happened, where it really came from, or something like that. But you know, I feel like these type of things induce the regular person's mind to think greater than what is just physically what we're seeing. So, I'm definitely thinking, like, okay. Have they just been having, you know, connection and communication with more than just God and higher levels of consciousness and state of beings and people of, you know, such advanced civilizations and technologies? Were they really connecting with ancestors, too, beyond before their time? And, you know, possibly... I don't even know, were they connecting with ancestors before their, you know, that were coming after them? Because, you know, souls are eternal, they're eternal energy. Once you pass away, they are released and you reincarnate. So, upon my pondering mind, I have come to the conclusion that they were definitely, that God is definitely the almighty creator of the universe, okay? And he sent... The Leonhona to Lehi and Nephi's family via an advanced civilization of knowledge. Because if you watch the video, go watch the video. I will link the video in the description. It's just like okay, how like how just how God and you know he's 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 the Almighty Creator. He's the he's the controller of the universe. I know there's things that we have not even seen on this earth yet. And it's great things, magnificent things, things that are, you know, of just knowledge. And I don't think these people were capable of thinking about it too far in depth at this point. But they knew that they had faith. And as they kept this faith, they were always eternally blessed no matter what happened. So, I would like to ask the Holy Spirit, please show us the energies in which we need to see about the Leahona. Okay, this kind of is poking out. Four of Wands. The Four of Wands is all about celebration and homecoming. And shortly after them, you know, using the Leahona, they um, end up traveling to the Promised Lands, which was the Americas. Okay. And if you look behind Alice there, she has her little uh, house of cards pitched up, tented up. Um, and in the Book of Mormon at this time, they were truly pitching up tents and journeying into the wilderness and then pitching up a tent and then taking it down and journeying into the wilderness because the lord kept instructing them pitch a tent here stay here for a bit okay wake up let's go let's journey into the wilderness even further so then the youngest the, the nephi he's not the youngest he's a middle child he ends up um building a ship which my goodness shout out to him and his craftsmanship got them to the americas and he didn't even know how to build this ship, okay? But he he kept his faith and knew that, you know, if he listened to God and how God showed him how to 
he ended up speaking to Lord and the Lord showed him, you know, build it like this, do this, this and this. Like everything was already mapped out. So I was just like, that's just really strange. And um, it's not strange. It was strange, but it was like of greater power. And I'm just like, I need that. This is why I have faith. This is why I go to church. And amen. Like, that's it. Like, you don't even have to tell me twice. And um, for once coming out to sign to just look how beautiful, look how serene, look how calm, look, they're just celebrating, you know, and in homecoming, meaning like you could be waiting on a partner, you could be, um, they were traveling home to where the Lord wanted them to go because, you know, they had to leave, they, the Lord instructed them to leave Jerusalem and to find a, um, the promised lands and promised them that I would take, that he would take them to the promised lands. So, so shall they obey and listen to him. And so they did. Um, but I, I like to say, and honestly, what I, I like to say what I feel. And honestly, I do feel like they were in contact with a higher dimension level of beings that were from way far more advanced technology than they had because this was literally the very first piece of technology that they had. And if you watch the video in the description about the Liahona, the thing moved and it, it, like, yeah, it was just like, what? Not in this time period, in this setting, how was that possible, you know? Okay, so Holy Spirit, please show us what we need to see about the Liahona. Holy Spirit, what do we need to, what energies do we need to know about the creation? Okay, no. That's so many. Uh. Okay, I'm going to redo that because I don't like the way that came out. Okay, but it's coming back out. Okay, so we have the hanged man. All right, um, the creation of the Liahona. Um, I got to look at my notes for this one. Because I don't want to say the wrong, I don't want to say the wrong thing. Okay, yeah. Pause, surrender, letting go, new perspective and point of view. And I feel like that's the perfect card to clarify where it came from. New perspective, seeing things from a grander scale, seeing things from above as these people are journeying in the wilderness and God is, God and the Lord's power are literally guiding them so to say that this piece of technology was created specifically for them by a higher source and they say the higher source you know whoever you worship y'all whatever um but just to <clears throat> how do, how do I word that Okay, four of wands is celebration, joy, harmony, relaxation, and homecoming. So, literally, they are celebrating that they got this piece of technology. And they didn't they didn't think to think about it too much. They just knew that it came from the Lord and came from God and came from... They don't know where the fuck it came from. But, in my opinion, it came from... The only place it could have came from is straight up out of the sky. And when things come straight up out of the sky, it is our ancestors, it is the Lord, it is God directly to the people okay and to say that god is not of a higher source or of a, or have access to advanced technology to me is just like mind-blowing like like to deny him of being able to create us who create the technology and stuff that we have today on this earth is mind-boggling so you, like if you're talking to me about god like you would be a fool to tell me that god does not have the power to create and have you know more advanced technology than even what we see today on this earth because i am just i don't know i just know that there's more advanced civilizations out there somewhere because they've already exist here on earth if that makes sense like we still don't know how these pyramids were built a hundred percent we still don't know how the tombs in egypt were built so we know how they were built but we don't know yeah we we still don't know how they were built so intricately and we have ideas but we just do not have 
I feel like as a collective consciousness, we are not tapped into the level of knowledge that these people that came before us had. And I feel like that's because of all the distractions that we have in our daily life now. Um, but, you know, it's, it's always out there for people to tap into. But I feel like that comes with a lot of silence, a lot of isolation. And it's really comes with not being around cities and not being around people so much. Um, cause nowadays we get distracted and literally by work, having to work for money and nine to fives back then, they literally created their own wealth. They had to, you know, find ore, find metals and stuff like that in order to create the abundance and riches that they did have. Okay. And the hangman is hanging from a clock. Okay. So new perspectives upon the levels of technology that they have. But upside down point of view, seeing things from different point of views. And I'm just getting like from a different time with this, with this, with this card and with this energy. And, um, call me crazy. I don't really give a fuck, but the hangman is in, he's literally in the forest. Like, I feel like he's literally upside down getting in tune with himself and perhaps being upside down in nature helps us tap into a new type of energy okay that just really came through came out to me there and on the bottom of the deck is king of pentacles and this is just screaming like this is god he's the king of pentacles he's the king of allowing us to manifest create any and everything that we truly think of because we again we are his creation we are the human race and um i just i just know like you know, this is God, and it's just like, we got to, I feel like, collectively, we got to start tapping into the technology side of things, because the Egyptians also, like, heavily tapped into using Ankh, and using the Ankh for, um, capitalizing on energy, and energetic pools, and stuff like that, and using that to open and access portals of energy, and, um, I know I'm not tapping on all of it all the way, but, I don't want to be reaching in all these different places, but it is all connected, okay? It's all inter internally connected because Earth is God's creation. So anything that we create, anything that we think of or tend to achieve comes directly from God, whether or not you believe in Him or not, because you are His consciousness, okay? Um... Now, I have my extraterrestrial deck here because I would like to get some clarification on perhaps if, you know, you believe or not in extraterrestrials, if what race, what, what, what race of extraterrestrials that, that God created, um, helped deliver the Liahona or deliver the technology to them like because to tell yeah i'm not getting into all that but holy spirit please i knew that was going to come out okay the golden ratio beauty patterns and nature guys 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 i <laughs> i truly think that I, I us as a human nature we do I mean, us as a human nature Human nature, mother nature, okay, coming through. I truly believe that us as a human race do not work together. We do not collectively tap into the energies of the ra uh, of the ratio. Okay, we do not tap into the energies of the ratio. We do not tap into the energies of the of nature as much as we should. Um, I feel like you know maybe isolating or putting ourselves collectively in big groups in nature. Uh, for a long experience, a long extended period of time, perhaps like a week or two, so, you know, just something small out of our norm would definitely heighten our collective consciousness and remove us from the distractions of working a nine to five. I feel like we're not supposed to be working for other people. We're supposed to be working for the human race. That makes sense. We are supposed to be working together, collaborating our minds in order to build a life on this earth that we truly want. Um, 
And that does mean, unfortunately, losing banks and stuff like that. However, if we could collectively come together, we can keep that from fucking happening. And we can keep our banks and we can or establish new banks in which benefit the people, okay? Um, there's enough, I'm hearing there's enough wealth to go around. We just haven't tapped into it yet. Humanity needs to start coming together more. Stop isolating themselves. Start talking to thy neighbor. Start working with thy neighbor. Start being able to converse with people outside of your comfort zone. Okay? A lot of people, like, have, like, these racist tendencies and shit like that. And that doesn't really do us any good because at the end of the day, we're all human. So, it's like, okay, well, why are you judging another human when you're human? Like, that's kind of stupid, you know? Um... I am missing something on the golden ratio. I know it. I just know it. Okay. Um, math. Knowing knowing the... Okay, so this is also the Fibonacci spiral, which is um, the golden ratio as well. And it is actually the... What's the word? Reoccurring pattern found in nature. Okay, it is also the symmetric pattern that entails almost all things that are created. I'm hearing it is of, it is all things that is created. Hold on. What am I missing? Of course, of course. The golden ratio, okay, yes, bitch, you was on it. The Fibonacci sequence, golden spiral, is a self-simulating fractal spiral sequence that is mathematically and geometrically found, yes, everywhere in nature. It is the, it is an irrational number and it is represented as phi. Phi, phi, fo, fum, okay. Giants. Giants are significant. Giants assisted in building... The pyramids, Lyrians. Okay. Um, numerically, it is the sum of two numbers that precede it. So the sequence is 0, 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, 21, 34, 55, 89, and 144. Now, if you know, there are also 141, 41, 144 chosen ones that walk upon this earth. And they have been, these people have been anointed by God to serve the higher realms these people have literally thrones and chairs and riches that sit right very closely to god in the heavens um it is known as nature's secret code or nature's universal rule as the divine connected proportions of the golden ratio concludes the small is to the large as the largest to the whole the governing pattern of the golden ratio is found everywhere in nature, including harmonics, arts, shells, flowers, leaves, architecture, weather patterns, tree, plant, animal, human, human biology, human biology, guys, and spiral, sp uh, goodness, I speak too fast sometimes, slow down, and spiral galaxies. The golden ratio has also been discovered on a nano and subatomic scale in solid matter. Now, this is getting into technology and electron, protons, neutrons. And not everybody understands that part because they think, oh, science. But literally, we are... I don't know if y'all heard that, but like, my neighbor just dropped something really, really heavy up nine. Oh, that just made my stomach get really hot. But I know I'm... Literally, we are science. Life is science. And when people don't put together science with, I don't know, I've just been finding myself, as I'm reading these the, the Bible and as I'm reading the Book of Mormon, I'm noticing myself naturally understand the book, but it's not just a book. It is more than just a book. It is the, like my elder told me today, it is the document to how... earth became populated and i keep looking off that way because i keep hearing all these different crazy noises as i'm saying all this shit so holy spirit is coming the fuck through um it's actually freaking me out because every time i'm about to say something big important like it <sighs> okay stop chill out bitch <laughs> chill out okay 
So, I am literally, as I'm reading these books, I have been noticing that, like, my mind just naturally... I've always been good at math and geometry and stuff like that, and um, I was a honors ge in high school. I took honors geometry and aced it, and I love that class so much, and it just made me feel like really calm. So, like I was going to say, we are we are science, if that makes sense, and I feel like a lot of people don't understand the grand scheme and the grand scale of what that truly means. But there have been, like, many scientific experiments, many different studies that, like, even if you, like, the simple one of, like, putting salt on, like, um, a speaker and playing different, playing different things, the salt will create different patterns. Um, nothing in life is a coincidence, so I truly feel that these are, you know, they are different frequencies, different vibrations, and different frequencies and vibrations allow us to tap in, allow us to tap in, which means understand, um, different mathematical equations different mathematical um powers and different mental abilities that will allow us to further the civilization of humanity it is said that some extraterrestrials use the golden ratio sequence sim symbiotically with hi their higher consciousness for pro uh, for propulsion energy of their crafts and to navigate interdimensional time traveling. The card means the card means creation. Okay, now I'm about to tell you all these things that I'm saying. Um, beauty, art, music, nature, mass, numbers, patterns, the weather, going with the flow, design, architecture, life unfolding naturally not forcing anything, and being present in the here and now moment, and blessings, okay? Literally, just, it is, <laughs> it is so mind-blowing right now. I love this feeling, like, I am feeling very, very warm, very uplifted, very light in body mass, like, I'm, butterflies in my stomach like my stomach is starting to get very warm and it's more so like uplifting it's it's a loving energy and I don't feel bad at all for speaking on it and I don't feel you know because I was a little hesitant to do this reading due to the fact that you know some it may test some people's faith because a lot of people are like really just structured on just learning about how the what the book says what the book says what the book says but it's not just about what the book says. It's about understanding the text and being able to see it from a different point of view, a higher point of view. I will turn them around so you guys can see them upright, but... Okay. Seeing it from a bet... I was from... I'll say from a better point of view. A better point of... Oh my god. Time travel, y'all. This card literally just said that, okay? Using this ratio in order to time travel. And I already pointed out the motherfucking clock. So, I want to... I don't want to say that they were time traveling, but they were traveling, if that makes sense, to pass time in the, in the wilderness. And, you know, I don't think they were keeping track of the day. They weren't keeping track of the days or anything like that because the book continuously says, and as... And it came to pass, which means time has... And time has passed. And... I don't think they were, you know, noticing or perhaps when we are in nature a lot more often and surrounded by the natural rhythm of nature, which is Earth's energy, we tend to notice that we time travel. And um, I'm going to leave you all on this little note. Um, every I've There's been two different times where I was in California driving and driving back from, from the store and the freeways in California are like very... When you're in like the inland parts, it's very connected. But we were coming back from the San Bernardino area, and we were getting on the 60 East. And there's two there's two um, freeways you can go on. There's one that takes you takes you um, to LA, and then there's one on 60 East that takes you to um, like the inland empires, like the Beaumont area, the Moreno Valley, the the Valley areas, like an in Indio towards San Diego. Now. If you know, San Diego is towards 
Mexico, Tijuana, Mexico as well, and um, eventually you can get down to Arizona. Now, y'all came back from a store. This has happened two different two different times. Okay, I was coming back from the San Bernardino area, and I get we I I know for a fact I got on the 60 East to get back home or to where I was visiting in California at the time. And some fucking how I ended up on the freeway reading signs that I was going towards LA. And I will never forget this shit ever in my life. It shit happened two different times. And I want to say like they're three to six months apart. No. Three to four months apart. And um... It was quite the experience because I remember just looking at the person I was in the car with driving and I was like, we were both freaking the fuck out. Like, we were just freaking out. Like, how did this fucking happen? I know, like, like we was like, you know, we just got on, the, but we about to be in, a, about to be in LA. How? Mm, how? So, um, I'm going to leave it here and ask, you know, Holy Spirit, please show us what alien... I don't even like calling them aliens. What beings, because we are all beings, little do we know. Um, oh, sorry. Holy Spirit, please, we're all beings. So we just label we and know that we are the human race, okay? Holy Spirit, please show me what beings have, I just seen the giants. Um, have it, Okay, this keeps coming out. So, the Visica Pisces, another reader has been picking up on the green-eyed monster, and if you look in the middle and see the eye, it, the pupil of it looks like the green eye. Okay, the Visica Pisces is a divine feminine birthing fertility. Um, to me, this is also manifesting, but if you notice, you will see the feminine energies, you will see the masculine energy, and then you will see the balanced in the middle. Um... And it's crazy that there's like this gold embroidery all the way on at the bottom because this is like the, the type of embroidery that, or I won't say embroidery, but the type of vibe that the Leahona gives off. And in the middle of these two, this is consciousness, okay? These two things represent consciousness. This right here is that middle, like it's the diagram chart and we've all done it in school. Um, this right here in the middle is the big bang the big um this is where secrets are this is where secrets are interpreted this is where secrets are evolved understood this is where true divine knowledge res uh, resides and it is when you are balanced in your masculine and your feminine energies to create the big bang and to see okay this is also giving me third eye vibes um to see in between to be able to see through the veils of you know energies and to be able to see through things that are just physically there okay time travel to be able to see through the veil all right um to be able to see different point of fucking views all right so, let me get the book back out. Because what do y'all want me to say about the... Okay, the Visica Pisces is the two overlapping discs of Visica Pisces contains the almond eye shape that was used in the ancient mystery schools to represent layers of interconnected meanings. Okay, like, oh, y'all are about to... Yes, I feel so blessed. Okay, I'm supposed to be giving y'all this message. I have been telling y'all I'm a vivid dreamer. I'm a motherfucking prophet. And I was bestowed upon this earth to, to to further the knowledge of the book. Don't, you know, live by the book, but understand the book beyond what just is text. Okay? Um, If y'all just see my eyes, I'm just so happy. Okay, let me, <laughs> let me chill out. Um... Including divine feminine energy. Okay. Hold on. This energy is so overwhelming. I gotta breathe. Oh my god. Like, I'm getting hot. 
didn't I say the Larians when I was talking about the the pyramids? Okay, I'm 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 just gonna oh my god. And I was just talking about the third eye too. So I'm going to do these last. I'm gonna do these two cards after this and. Mm. Okay, okay. Mm. Okay, I'm being guided to pull this one too. The Ebens, which is a race of beings. And they are pretty small, but look at their noggins, okay? They are way more knowledgeable than we are and beyond our mental capacity at this point. Um, however, if we... I'm getting that if we grow our pineal glands or figure out how to grow the size of our pineal glands, um, our perhaps our heads will tend, tend or start to expand in mental capacity, mental knowledge as well. Um, mystery, reading between the lines and intuition. All right. So going back to physical Pisces, it is contains the almond eye shape that was used in the ancient mystery schools. To represent layers of interconnected meanings, including divine feminine and the holy passage. Okay, um, if you want to see it, the holy passage. Okay, um, holy spirit, holy consciousness, um, portal for the soul that links heaven, which is spirit, and earth, physical. I just feel so blessed. I know the shit I be saying is so on point. The vesica Pisces symbol is also a geometric and esoteric aspect of the flower, which is the seed of life, symbolically and actually. Later, monotheistic Christianity, okay, the Book of Mormon belongs to the Church of Latter-day Saints, Jesus Christ's church, um, the one and only true church that has the power on earth to bestow certain blessings, certain priesthoods, and spiritual forgiveness. I don't, I'm hearing that, but, you know, prayer and stuff like that works. I'm not here to judge you on what you do, but I would suggest going to church. That's just me. Um, the later monotheistic Christianity adopted the symbol to represent the fish, which is the soul, and Jesus. In East Africa, the symbol is known as the Mandalora. The ancient Celts created female Sheila, not gig, figurines who expose their genitals and archetypically represent the same. Two interesting circles symbolize the creative... And I have this page bookmarked, which is so crazy. Um... The two interconnected circles symbolize the creative birth space the, that emerges, the third archetypal enti entity which holds the linking trinity energies that are the energetic forces and geometric building blocks on all levels of divine manifestation. Manifestation could be as simple as a intention, as simple as a thought, but without a little bit of action. And I feel like writing it down and giving it to the ethers, which is... the world um that is you know giving it to the ethers could be like writing it out um to some people they burn it in the fireplace burn their works in a fireplace you know write a letter to god burn it um and allow it to pass through his door um i i've also seen like this it's not what i've seen but i've seen this okay i've seen it the the door it's it's a white door but it's his flame, it, it, in the door, the door is full of flames, and the, the flames can be intimidating to some people, but it's more so, you lose the illusion of fear, you know that fear is not capable of anything, and you walk through the door of his, you know, of fire, but fire is, an, it's an earth element, and it's not meant to scare you or anything like that, but, a uh, holy door. The card means procreation, birthing, pregnancy, divine feminine, fertility, divine trinity, the body, mind, and soul, sacred union, me, us, and you, thoughts, actions, emotions, and union. Okay? Um, I'm moving on to the Lyrians, strength, courage, and bravery. And if you just look closely, they are like the... Okay, look at the Lyrians' eyes. 
Look at the Vesica Pisces eye in the middle. Um, the same exact eyes. The Larians are um, also, I have read a document, watched a documentary on the pyramids of, um, and how the pyramids were built. And these, this was the race that was documented in the tombs and written about. Um, in some of the texts that they decoded and wrote in hieroglyphs to document these things because even the Egyptian hieroglyphs had markings of connecting with other beings if that makes sense so um, they are the cat race um, lions and I'm also they're also sporting Jamaican colors okay And if you look at what they look at, or what he's looking at, it almost, you see the flower of life right there. That's the geo pattern for that. Um, and you also see different triangles and right angles and stuff like that. Um, this is, to me, these are also like sacred um, symbolism and stuff like that. But in a scope, I see when I look at this ley lines and longitude of the earth and that he's literally overseeing the earth. Okay. Strength, courage, and bravery. <clears throat> the feline Larian, Larians, Larians, however you want to say it, Larians are sometimes referred to as the lion people or cat people. And the Larian civilization or, originates from the North Larian constellation, which is also which also contains Vega. The Larian genotype was often the dominant original mother genotype used in ancient star seed projections of the projects, excuse me, of the cosmos. As they are one of the oldest bloodlines in the Milky Way galaxy, many ETs within the Milky Way galaxy are ancestrally related to ancient Larians. They usually stand 6 to 10 feet tall and are solid to muscular in build. Their complexions vary anywhere from light golden amber to dark chocolate brown hues. Some Larians have strawberry blonde to vibrant ginger red hair. The darker Larians have dark to black hair. Larians have battled many bloody cosmic wars in the past with the Orion, Alpha Draconian, Reptilian empires. They live harmonious lifestyles and practice careful biodiversity of their ecosystem. Now, I relate the harmonious lifestyle and practice of careful biodiversity of their ecosystem to the chapter 16 in the Book of Mormon because they were in the wilderness. They were, they were complacent. They were obedient. They were um grateful for what they had even though it wasn't everything that they once had at one point and i feel like that's why they were blessed with such advanced technology because they were abundant in being obedient um okay prior to the egyptian pyramids ever being built the ancient egyptian sphinx was built by the Lyrans and other visitors of the time during the leo 2000 year constellation time phase of the precession of the equinoxes they do not suffer fools gladly and are an honest, open, bold, and proud race. They are known to be combative and fiery for masters they value dearly while also being warm and affectionate. The card means strength, courage, bravery, defiant, proud, bold, affectionate, being a library, and uh, being a library is unmatched. Because you are the you are literally the house for every book of record that could be fucking written, okay? And that's just that's what a library does. It holds books and it holds knowledge, which is people's testimonies, people's lives, everything. Um, respect, honor, and ancestors. Okay, I'm not gonna repeat it, but I am. Um, one of the oldest bloodlines in the Milky Way galaxy. All right. And I'm just going to lightly speak on the third eye because um, I just feel like this opens a whole other field of level of knowledge and stuff. But it is important for you to use your third eye. It's located right here. Um, and if you can, if you see, it is connected to the brain. It is the 
energetic field in which allows us to process things be beyond just what we read, touch, feel, and see. Um, they are visions, which are spiritual gifts. They are manifesting things that you want in your life. It could be as, as much as a reoccurring thought, a strong intention, a strong thought, but it must be implicated and worked on. Meditation. Um, I'll, I'll read it because I'm just being guided to read on it. I know this video is longer than I expected, but everything happens for a reason, and I definitely truly feel like it was meant to be this long. Um, I feel so good right now. I feel like I'm definitely educating people. So, um, I've been guided to teach. Okay, so get a teaching degree. But teaching what? Psychology. Go back to school for psychology. Okay. The third... Sorry, y'all. I just be... I just be getting it. I just be getting it. I don't know how to explain it. I just get it. The third eye is the esoteric term for the higher inner eye the, that interdimensionally travels through the cosmic doorway. Okay. And this is going back to the Visca Pisces. Okay. The third eye is in the middle of the balanced energies. It is the masculine and the feminine energies in the middle. Um... The third eye is what connects us to the holy passageway, okay? Um, although the third eye is not physically on our foreheads or anything like that, it is, it once was, and it is a, it's an ener energetic portal way, I've already explained what physical Pisces was that, but, um, okay, just stay on focus, don't overwhelm yourself. <laughs> If y'all ever seen the movie E.T., you know how he, like, or just different things, like, he'll point, but, and touch his finger, but he'll also, like, point right here and touch right here. And this has actually been proven to be a stress-relieving thing, and if you pay attention to other cultures as well, they're the, I believe it's the Hindu religion, um, they mark their third eye red, and I believe that when they do that, it is... Showing their level of knowledge, showing that they are also protecting their psyche. And it also is um, the main point of one psyche, if that makes sense, or psychic visions. Um, interdimensionally travels through the cosmic doorway and per perceives realms, living information of higher consciousness. Um, adepts who have developed their third eye are known as seers clairvoyant and remote viewers who are observing outside of the limited local frequency field out-of-body experiences and dreams are functioned through the third eye physically the third eye that tunes into higher frequencies is located deep inside the dark human brain and functions like a projector video camera capturing the holographic frequencies at the plank p-l-a-n-c-k field level beyond third dimensional per third dimension perception the gateway third eye in Sanskrit and Hinduism. Woo! I just spoke on that. I just said that. Uh, I love myself. Is referred to as the Anja, which means command and perceiving. Activating the third eye begins through being a in a meditative and relaxed altered state of awareness where the human transcends into non-local fields outside of dense frequencies. These states of awareness also allow... The third eye to witness beyond conditional mind narratives and receive in living information beyond the speed of light. Beyond the speed of light. So that is how the Leahona was delivered to Lehi's feet. It was, they were so disconnected from, you know, all the distractions and stuff that we have now today, but they were so disconnected from all the. common mindry that was going on back in Jerusalem and they were just out in the wilderness literally meditating without even knowing it sitting by the streams of water that they came upon fo following the Lord and what he commanded them to do and being obedient to the strong thoughts and intentions that they were getting which is what allowed them to communicate with God and different levels of consciousness and beings that were not physically shown to them but they were through angels and God. So I believe when they seen these angels and they seen God and they seen the Lord, they were definitely talking to 
the creator, the almighty creator of consciousness. Um, these states, uh, yeah, the third eye is ruled by the sixth chakra that functions within indigo frequencies of light. Nearly all extraterrestrial intelligence are highly evolved in the use of the third eye. And to finally end this reading off, um, I'm actually going, oh gosh, okay, I'm actually going to do this one kind of fast, but I'm going to pull from my light worker deck. Ooh, 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 ooh. All right, so I'm not even going to shuffle these because it was just right, right there for me to grab from. And I just, yeah, I'm not even going to question it. That's what I'm being guided to do. Um, the Ebens are mystery, reading, oh sorry, the third eye means visions, dreams, out-of-body experiences, perceptions, manifesting, meditation, multidimensional awareness, balanced, altered states of awareness, opening portals, psychic, open, to being open to open-minded, um, insightful, initiation, and receptive. Now, the Ebens are perfect. Mystery, reading between the lines, and intuition. And if you notice, the little bear back there is missing an eye. But that's okay, because I'm feeling like when we lose one of our senses, the rest of them are heightened very highly and um because we're no longer relying on that so our body has to alter in which we rely on even is an acronym name for extraterrestrial biological entity used by specialized top secret pathology osteology and scientific experiments researching discovered ets in captivity alive or possibly injured from spacecraft crashes or researching deceased ETs via autopsies. Though Eben does not refer to any one specific type of ET, it is claimed scientists have labeled the found Ebens into five known categories. Many alternative scholars believe the tiny mummified skeleton found in the Atacama Desert. I live in the desert. I live in the desert. I live in Las Vegas. In northern, but this, okay, let me tell you something. I said earlier that in the Book of Mormon, they were traveling to the Americas. And I just found out today, actually, at my lesson, that when they traveled to the Americas in the boat that ne Nephi was instructed to build, the they ended up in South America first and then eventually made their way up to New York. All right? The mummified skeleton found in the Atacama Desert in northern Chile. And it's crazy. The other, I just went to um, this little function the day before yesterday at church. And one of the girls mentioned Chile. Um, is indeed an Eben and not human for a range of scientific reasons not mentioned in mainstream discourse. And because humans are ancestrally of ET genetics, which goes totally against the official publicized narrative. The card means mystery, the unknown, reading between the lines, subliminal, Dis using discernment, which is the ability to judge a situation correctly and understand other people's emotions in a situation as well. Um, seeing things from another point of view, that's discernment. Um, intuition, trusting that gut feeling, trusting your thoughts, trusting trusting your thoughts are in are true. So working out of the feminine energy and not being balanced being balanced in both your energies is what gives you truth um hunch going off of a hunch which could be like a a thought that randomly comes to mind that we are not you know quite sure of a hundred percent but you know still being diligent and in investigating that and being able to go beyond that healthy skepticism infant something is in its infancy stage discriminating data and questioning which is pondering and probing okay now for the light workers deck i do want to shuffle it but i just have a feeling these cards are going to come back out so i'm going to show you guys the three cards that were on the bottom of the deck as i was guided to um pull from the light workers deck it was soul child okay um 
these cards I just love taking for face value because the art is just so damn perfect. Trust in the plan. And if you look, this is like... <laughs> to me, this is like either an ancestor or one of God's ascended masters delivering us the Holy Spirit, the Holy Light in the coming from the heavens and from his brain. He's literally usurping the universe. So, it's just... Beyond comprehension, that's what I'm getting from this card. Beyond comprehension, beyond just reading it word for word, understanding it from other point of views, okay? Um, connecting and using intuition um, versus just taking things for face value. Even though I just said I take these cards for face value, but every time I look at them and I channel, I just get different messages um the number eight could be significant okay the evens is eight and the star child is eight the star child is someone who is chosen okay they are deliberately put here on earth and their soul is chosen to come onto earth and if you just look you'll see the cosmos you'll see the child and you'll see every single one of the earth's elements okay except for i don't see fire here but it's there oh wait oh yep there's fire um Every single one of the earth elements just in the palm of her hand. Meaning, we have the ability and she has, she, she, we have nature at the bottom too. So, going back to beauty, nature, um, and patterns. There's so many keys here to where, like, this is, I, I can't even, this is already an hour long. Holy crap. Um, <laughs> let me shuffle this deck real quick. Y'all, I am just so grateful that I did this reading and I did not get discouraged because I definitely feel like I am here to decode the book in a way. Um, I know that's kind of like very scarce to say in a way, um, but fear not, fear not. Um, Holy Spirit, please show us how we need to close this out. What is the, okay, I'm gonna leave it there. Divine talents, okay? Is that a trumpet? No, I don't know what the, the flute. I think that's a, a, a type of flute. Um, let me, I have not actually pulled this card yet. All right, divine talents. You are a talented soul. Over many lifetimes, you have developed your spiritual abilities to channel higher awarenesses. No wonder my energy was getting whew, overwhelmed. It just ooh. attract healing energy and radiate light to uplift the consciousness of those around you. Your divine talents are many and uniquely expressed through you. Your talents do not have to resemble those of another to have their own inestimate, inestimable value. Do not be afraid to use them. Divine talents are a way in which the universe reminds us of what we are here to do. And like I said earlier, I am a I I am a I am a seer. I'm a vivid dreamer. I am a prophet that was bestowed upon this earth in order to help us further the consciousness of humanity into understanding things beyond what is our physical to remove us from intricately placed distractions by governments okay governments okay they include the adaptability to channel spiritual guidance and healing energy to perceive clairvoyantly and be psychic and emp empathic other spiritual talents are the ability to release earthbound spirits earth healing techniques such as working with energy grids as well okay this is the energy grid i was talking about this is earth and I told you that what I see is longitude and latitude. And I will also say that I am a Leo. And these, they were here within the 2000 Leo energetic portal. Okay. Um, I'm a Leo sun and Capricorn moon in case you're asking. Um, where was I at? Energy grids as well as healing ability with crystals and the many, and the many and varied technologies of light. 
There are other spiritual talents too. These include writing, performing, sound, healing, dancing to awaken awareness, creating art, photography, or divinely inspired tools. Cooking food that heals the body and spirit in the spiritual talent are as are the abilities to bring people together to offer comforting and inspiring words at the right time to help others overcome fear and feel more peaceful in the moments of importance and more. You could use your divine talents in your career as a healer or a teacher, in your work in the corporate world or in your stay-at-home role as a parent, helping to raise more conscious, secure, and empowered children. In a world that is in desperate need of strong, spiritually grounded leaders for the future. Okay, and I'm all about the future. I'm all about aiding the children. I'm actually have a startup business that I'm working on right now that is going to help us reduce the amount of waste and save our soils because the earth cannot breathe if the soil is not freed of toxins and pretty much our landfills are and the amount of waste that we produce are, is killing our soil and if our soil is not good our earth cannot breathe and that will cause all of nature to die N oh, burp for confirmation you can use your talents to create a vocation that truly inspires you and brings your light to the world you can use them in the line at the grocery store um this comes to you with a message you have spiritual talents some of which have been developed in other lifetimes meaning you know past lives which are your soul you know living in a different time before i was actually born so our souls are reincarnated upon the earth okay so the last time i died i became this baby that was being born in 1998 um you have spiritual talents some of which have been developed in other lifetimes and will simply and suddenly spring back to life as if it came from out of the blue this lifetime other need, others need a little more attention, patience, and effort to be brought to life in the world. This is particularly the case for you at this time. If you have, uh, if you have drawn this card, the oracle, it is the oracle of past life activation. So I'm getting. I was a speaker. I don't. I'm, I was a speaker. Sometimes there is fear in sharing talents. Okay, and I got on here and was kind of shaky of talking on the book of mormon and the, the other sacral texts and being able to piece this other information together but as i was reading it like it just the the amount of advanced technology just really just blew my mind and i was like there's so much more to hear that i gotta share and give to the people um you may have a subconscious or a very conscious past life recollection that involves shame isolation ridicule fear or even torture or death as a response to you sharing your talents for healing and helping others. Maybe you fear your spiritual talent will not allow you to meet your material needs or that others will reject or end or deny your talent. And that's mainly why I didn't want to do this reading, but I'm so glad that I did because the amount of happiness that I got from it is far more greater than what anybody can take from me. So all y'all can piss off. And even if you know it to be authentic, even if you know it to be authentic and helpful, okay? Yes, yes, yes. I am just going to leave it there um, because I'm just so happy. And um, I really hope and truly pray that you guys um, got something from this message because I feel like I just pieced so a very big part of where we are today as humanity and in regards to our faith and in regards to the things that we read and obey and structure our lives around i feel like i just pieced a big piece i just connected a big piece of what people structure their lives on to a higher level of consciousness and knowing that um it's more to it than just it's more than just a book guys to me it's more than just a book to live by it's um definitely something that was derived from a higher level of consciousness and these people in in the book took record of that because you know that's all they that's that's the only tool that they had at that time but now that we have gotten to the point where we are in this life in this lifetime as humans we have so much more better tools and this definitely like makes me feel so great so um i'm gonna leave it there 
And I hope that you guys truly got something from this message. I hope you're having a grand rising afternoon, evening, wherever you're at. Please feel free to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Um, in the meantime, if it doesn't resonate with you, please let it go. Um, but do what you do. Love it, hate it, talk shit about it, share it, don't. I don't care because I know it to be true. I believe in the Book of Mormon and I also believe in my mind. And I've also, it, it just, what encouraged me even more to do this reading was when I asked my elders, you know, my question about the Leahona, they didn't even know where it came from, but I did. So, I'm not here to brag or anything like that, but, um, brag about it, baby. Brag about it. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just so silly, but I love it. Um, yeah, I hope you guys are doing great, and I'm going to leave it here. Bye. See you next time.